Hey, I'm Dean Peterson, a filmmaker from Brooklyn. I made the film Incredibly Small, and I'm about to shoot my second feature film, What Children Do. When we shot my first film, we shot it on the Sony EX-1, and we used old Nikon prime lenses with um, a lettuce adapter, which gave it a really, uh, a really great image, actually. Uh, the, the old Nikon lenses mixed with the, the spinning glass of the lettuce adapter kind of gave it this really um, smooth, kind of creamy, filmic feel, uh, which we really liked. Um, and we kind of chose that camera partly because uh, my DP owned it, but also partly because, you know, back in 2009 when we shot the movie, um, DSLRs weren't really a mainstay of the industry yet. You know, the 5D hadn't even been out for a year, and um, films like Tiny Furniture, which kind of opened the door for using these DSLRs, um, hadn't even come out yet. So we, we kind of had sort of limited options. Back then, people were kind of still using the kind of traditional camcorders, like the HVXs a lot. Um, and so we kind of just used what we had. The change from when we made the first movie until, you know, I'm about to shoot my second film is like incredible in terms of cameras. I mean, now, you know, you can go to Best Buy and you can buy a $700 DSLR that shoots, you know, 4K and you can shoot in pitch black. Um, whereas back then it just simply wasn't the case. There was still like a lot of limitations. So it was just a completely different, um, landscape back then and so the decision of what camera we we're going to shoot on this time was like a lot more um, involved and we had a lot more options and a lot more research that we had to do. We talked a lot about what we want the image um, to look like for this uh, film and we also talked a lot about process you know we're going to be a really small nimble crew and we're going to be shooting pretty quickly um, and so we didn't want to like have to deal with a lot of peripheral accessories that you need to add on to it. We didn't, you know, want a camera that necessitated a huge camera department. We kind of wanted to be as um, agile and um, adaptable as we possibly could. My DP Darren and I had shot a film on um, the Blackmagic um, cinema camera, um, and we really liked how that looked. Um, and we, you know, we liked that the pocket cinema camera is really small and it looks really great, but you know, you kind of have to add all this stuff to the camera, you know, you, the battery kind of sucks, you have to have an external power source. Um, you know, it's hard to do handheld stuff with such a small camera, so you know, you end up putting a cage and like a shoulder rig. So by the end of, you know, adding all this stuff and all the complications, it's kind of as big and as, and as expensive as, you know, some of these other cameras. Um, and so the camera that we finally decided to shoot on was the Canon C300. Um, you know, I'd shot a music video on it before and I, I just loved, I, I love the way it looks and I love shooting with it. I, I feel like it kind of just takes all of the barriers out of your way when you're shooting. Um, you know, it's really, it's pretty like easy to use. It's really easy to get a great image quality out of it. Um, the low light is incredible. You can kind of go into locations and not necessarily need to light them too much, which is a big part of how we're going to shoot this movie is, you know, we're just going to go into a lot of, um, you know, rooms or businesses and try to use as much natural and available light as possible. Um, and the C300 is like the best camera that I've ever used for that kind of shooting. You know, I do, I do find myself going online and kind of falling victim to the hysteria of, uh, of camera culture that exists on there. Um, and it's always these camera comparison tests of like, for some reason, you know, guys shooting like the siding of their house or like, you know, the blowing leaves in their backyard to kind of show, you know, the muddled compression of one camera versus another or something like that. And at that point, I find it good to kind of step back and just remind yourself of, you know, at the end of the day, we're supposed to be storytellers and these cameras and tools and technology that we use are just supposed to be there in service of telling a story and not just as like a cool toy to have. Um, even though I do find it shockingly easy to kind of, you know, get swept up in the, the debate of, you know, how many stops of dynamic range something has and what is the best codec and, you know, what bit rates this kind of camera has. Um, but it is always good to remind yourself, to remind myself that at the end of the day, that is not the most important thing. It is definitely important, but it's not the most important consideration when you're making a movie.